rigor. What do we mean by rigor in a mathematical task? In mathematics, a rigorous task refers to a task that is cognitively demanding, a task that provides with the opportunity for students to make deeper connections. This idea of rigor got a lot of attention also as a result of the team study, the third international math and science survey by researcher James Stigler. Um, study average teaching, how does average teaching happen in the United States? We learn a number of things about the study. First, learning is a cultural activity. Now think about that. Learning is a cultural activity. What does that mean? That basically means that we don't necessarily learn how to teach when we go to college. We learn how to teach as a result of our cultural interactions, as a result of being exposed to teaching ourselves even before we even get to college. The second thing we learn is that there are more than one way to teach effectively. In fact, there are many, many ways to teach effectively. And the third one is that the quality of teaching is in the detail of the implementation. Now, that goes very well aligned with what we have always known, that the devil is in the detail. Well, there are two things that we can see in an average classroom in the uh, United States. The first one is that most activities are teacher-centered. And the second one is that the kind of problems chosen by teachers to explain their topics are procedure in nature, computational. That means that when you walk into a math classroom, you're more likely to see a teacher uh, discussing a problem, problem that is procedural in nature, that is computational. Now, this is a problem because we have learned that in order for students to make connections, to fully conceptually understand the mathematics of the topic at hand, they need to struggle. In, and this happens with a task that is cognitively demanding. And a problem, an exercise that is a strictly procedural in nature will not, by definition, allow himself, allow the student to struggle with the idea when it comes up behind. In this graph, the column on the left represent it's, a, it's an estimate of the time that these different countries spend on questions that are procedure in nature, while the column on the right represent the time they spend on questions that are rich in nature. Notice that the graph of Hong Kong and Japan, the two top achieving countries, look very different. Sure, Japanese students spend a lot of their time, more than half their time, working on rich problems. But this is not the case for Hong Kong, whose students do very well. So there's more to it. And in fact, researchers went back into the surveys, into the tapes, to see what was going on. And there's a lot more. Now, in this graph, you can see how Hong Kong and Japan look alike. This graph represents the rigor of the problem. Was when the problem was implemented, was the rigor kept? It's telling us that in most, in Japan and Hong Kong, when the teacher chose to do a problem that was rich in nature, cognitively demanded, they kept the rigor. And the two top achieving countries now in this graph look a lot alike. In contrast, the United States, as you can see, most of the time the problems are degraded. In fact, every single one of the time that the researcher look at the tape, the questions were degraded. Now I'm going to leave you with a question. How do we as teachers degrade the rigor of a question? What do we do that reduces the cognitive demand of a task?